From the 16th century on, Europeans started to colonize various parts of the world. The first colonizers were the Spanish under the guidance of Christopher Columbus. In a short while, the Spanish conquistadors invaded South America, enslaving the native peoples who inherently had been a peaceful race. The provinces of South America, which were rich in gold and silver, were plundered by these invaders. The native people who resisted were slaughtered. After the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Dutch, and then the British took part in the competition for colonization. In the 19th century, Britain became the world's greatest colonial empire. From India to Latin America, the British Empire exploited the natural resources far and wide. White man was plundering the world for his own interests. Of course, these colonial powers did not want to be remembered throughout history as plunderers. So they have sought a means of justification for this exploitation. The justification was labeling the exploited people as primitive men, even possibly animal-like creatures. Such assertions were first put forward during the early period of colonization, the time when Christopher Columbus set sail for America. By claiming that the American native people were not real human beings, but a developed animal species, the Spanish colonizers sought to justify their enslavement. As it happened, this argument did not attract many advocates, since during that period, Europeans widely believed that humans were all created equal by God, and that all came from one common ancestor, the prophet Adam. However, things changed in the 19th century. As materialist doctrines flourished, people started to ignore the fact that human beings were created by God. This was also the birth of racism. The allegedly scientific basis of racism was Darwin's theory of evolution. Indian anthropologists Lalita Vidyarthi states, Darwin's theory of the survival of the fittest was warmly welcomed by the social scientists of the day, and they believed mankind had achieved various levels of evolution culminating in the white man's civilization. By the second half of the 19th century, racism was accepted as fact by the vast majority of Western scientists. With such racial views, Darwin provided solid support to the colonizing policies of the European powers. The imperialism of Victorian Britain chose Darwinian theory as its so-called scientific basis and justification.
One of the most interesting examples of how the evolution theory offered inspiration to British imperialism was the scandal of the Piltdown Man. In 1912, a strange skull was dug up in Piltdown, England. Charles Dawson, the scientist who found the skull, together with his team, declared that it belonged to a creature that was half ape, half human. Arthur Keith, the famous evolution anatomist, examined the fossil and confirmed the results. However, Dawson and Keith emphasized an important point. The brain size of Piltdown Man was as big as that of modern man. The jawbone, however, had ape-like features. Suddenly, the brain of Piltdown Man became a source of great pride for the British. Since his skull was found in England, it surely had to be an ancestor of the British. The great size of the brain was supposed to indicate that the British had evolved to a higher status than the other races, thus in effect confirming that the British mind was superior. Which is why the discovery of Piltdown Man aroused such great excitement in England. Newspapers ran headlines. In social circles, they joyously celebrated this discovery. The British government, for their part, honored Arthur Keith with a knighthood as acknowledgement for his work on the Piltdown Skull. The famous evolutionary paleontologist, Johansson, explains the relationship between Piltdown and British imperialism as follows. The Piltdown discovery was very Eurocentric. Not only did the brain have preeminence, but the English had preeminence. The inspiration the English derived from Piltdown Man lasted for 40 years. Then, in 1953, a scientist named Kenneth Oakley examined the fossil in detail and disclosed that it was in fact the greatest forgery of the 20th century. The fossil had been faked by attaching an orangutan jaw to a human skull. London Radio announced this fact in astonishment. Britain's August Natural History Museum is all a dither over a scandal concerning the Piltdown Man. One of the most famous fossil skulls in the world is declared to be in part a hoax. Forty years ago, its discovery was a sensation. Today comes the shocking news that this is skullduggery. For the evolutionists, the Piltdown Man scandal was only a beginning. In the coming years, other skulls were presented as proof of the ancestor of man. But later, each one of these proved to be either a fraud or a misinterpretation. It was determined that these skulls either belonged to extinct ape species or ancient human races. Despite this fact, evolutionists went even further and dared to present fossils of chimpanzees, orangutans, and even pigs as ancestors of man. Yet over time, they had to reject these fossils, to which they gave names such as Zinjanthropus, Ramapithecus, and Hesperopithecus. The story of Piltdown Man provides a symbolic indication of how British racism derived support from the theory of evolution. English imperialism had actually found more solid grounds to rely on. For a five long, what? Find roses, oil, be thou trip the bus. Nazism was born out of the political chaos that Germany experienced after the First World War. The leader of the Nazi party was Adolf Hitler, who had a highly ambitious and very aggressive nature. Hitler took an intensely racist standpoint 